you. School days are the best days of your life. I'm sure we've all heard that. For me, looking back, it was true. But it didn't seem that way all the time. That's me, age 11. And school days were a place where actually I did make some amazing friendships with adults and children. I had my first kiss. Naomi, a year younger than me, the playground was empty and it turned into a snog. I learned two languages and I left with some amazing skills. But unfortunately, when I went to secondary school, I was affected by bullying. The bullying exists in every single school. I'd be feeling happy and secure doing things like this, I suppose, but not quite as exciting, when suddenly a bully would say something or do something that would make me upset, instantly ruin my day, and I can remember going home in tears quite often. It seemed like the bullies were in every classroom, around every corner, and did everything they could to upset me. I knew it was wrong. I knew that I had the right to feel safe all the time, but what could I, 11-year-old Alex, do about it? My brain was telling me, well, you've got to tell someone. But I thought, if I told my mum, she's going to be angry, she's going to come in, and that's going to make the situation even worse. So instead, I suffered in silence. And that went on for a bit. I was mostly bullied because I was mixed race, and actually I still am mixed race, funnily enough. <laughs> but also because I was a bit of a geek. I was different, and they picked up on that. There was a culture where actually it was okay to bully, and it wasn't okay to speak out. But when I joined the sixth form, I felt able to speak out. I felt able to do something about it. And it was 2004, the same year that the UK created the first ever anti-bullying week. I knew that my school had to mark this. My school had to do something about it. So I rather cheekily created a role for myself, student anti-bullying coordinator. Now my head teacher, he wasn't so convinced about this. He wasn't really sure where the role came from and, and what it meant. And I had to convince him and a load of others that there was even bullying in the school. He wasn't so sure it existed. But eventually, he said to me, Alex, you're the boss, do what you like. And I did. And he became a mentor, but actually became more than a mentor. I grew up without my dad in my life for a while, and I think he was a good role model. He was somebody that believed in me and somebody that let me test out my ideas on the world. And that was really, really important. I would do things like assemblies. I'd do a rap on bullying. Things that got the rest of the school interested in engaging in this topic and, and playing their part. I left the sixth form and instead of going to university, I deferred my place. I figured, what am I going to achieve in those three years that I can't achieve now? It was too exciting to stop what I was doing. So I carried on. And I would tour schools, spreading my anti-bullying message. It wasn't easy. I'd go to some schools and I'd say, stand up if you're against bullying. Three people would stand up. One of them being dragged back down to their seat by their mate. But by the end of the session, they were all standing up. I'd create things like smile and compliment days. I started that at a school in Milton Keynes. On a smile day, the teacher awards the best smile in every lesson with a sticker. Those sticker winners are put into a prize drawer and you can win anything from a free haircut to a free meal in a restaurant. And if you're a smile ambassador, then it's your job to go around spreading positive vibes, making someone smile and ultimately make their day. And you even get to ditch your shirt and tie and wear a special I Love Smiles t-shirt. It was a big responsibility. And on a compliment day, every single person at school was set a challenge of 10 compliments. And you go around giving those out, maybe even receiving some compliments. 
and there'd be a big board in the hall. If you're a compliment ambassador, you'd be manning that desk and people could pin up their best compliment. And again, the best compliments receive prizes in every lesson and for those that have pinned up their example of a compliment. I suppose it was all about making these young people mini celebrities in their school, giving them the skills and the responsibility uh, to make a difference, to shape their school and the community, but actually to shape the world around them. And it worked. It definitely worked. I think we can all say that we love stickers no matter how old you are. And on an average smile or compliment day, 365 individuals were recognized for their positive behavior. I would continue to do that. I would visit lots of schools and I would be inspired by the different ideas that young people had and the potential that young people had to, to change their school and change the world around them. People started to believe in me. So much so that I received a thousand pounds in 2007 to kind of extend my work a little bit. A thousand pounds, a grand. And funnily enough, I had a grand idea to make my mark. I wanted to create a TV advert. I wanted every single citizen to know that they should be an active citizen, one that doesn't stand by and watch things happen. Instead, goes on a crusade and change things for the better. I wanted everyone to know that they could play a part in tackling bullying. So I found a director, I found a producer, I found a celebrity in the form of gold medalist Dame Kelly Holmes, sadly not my sister, and I rallied the people together to make an advert. And this is it. <laughs> Be part of the big stand on May the 22nd. Visit beatbullying.org for more info. Stand up and beat bullying. And again, it was exciting. It made me think, right, I've achieved this, what's next? And at the same time, there was this theory emerging a year later, the big society. People thought that the big society began in schools. And if you're sitting there or watching this thinking, what's the big society? Well, don't worry, politicians that dreamt it up are still wondering that. Do a bit of research and maybe you'll come up with the answer. But I think they feel it's the idea that society has the answers to some of our problems. And I think that's spot on. Young people spend an impressionable 11,000 hours of their life in full-time education. And I think that's where community begins. That's where we get our sense of what it means to be a community, where we can see how we can change the world around us. And if we can get young people doing good stuff in their school, then they're much more likely to go out into their community and copy that behaviour, whether it's waving to their neighbour or volunteering some of their time. They can make such a difference. And I wanted to capture that youthful optimism and, and spread it as far as I could. While bullying was still affecting millions of young people, slowly attitudes were changing. Old school opinions like bullying can be good for you or bullying can be character building were slowly disappearing. It was a battle and many still felt that actually it was a normal part of life. But I was there telling them bullying is not a normal part of life and it's certainly not a normal part of growing up. It was more than just about anti-bullying. It was about looking out for each other. A survey nearly two years ago said that only 9% of adults feel that young people contribute to their community and one in four would cross the road if they ever saw another youth. That combined with the fact that my local town council, Stony Stratford in Milton Keynes, felt that young people were hanging around the street, being a nuisance, skateboarding, I'd seen very few skateboarders, made me want to do something about it. Random acts of kindness or goodies in hoodies was my answer. 
young people taking over their high street and performing good deeds. Whether that was free hugs, face painting, teaming up with your local florist and giving out flowers. That small gesture, that small thing that makes such a big difference. And actually too often we underestimate the power of touch, a kind word, an honest compliment, all of which have the potential to turn around the lives of others. It was making a big difference. It was definitely making a big difference. And the story that stays with me forever is an old lady who's lived in Stony Stratford for all her life. She encountered these random acts of kindness, team, these goodies in hoodies, and she got a flower from them. She walked a little further down the high street, and she received a joke, a free joke. She walked a little bit further down, and she received a cake. And then she got to her house, and there was a young person offering a hug. She started crying because that had been the first bit of contact she'd had all day, and it had been with four different young people. And all we'd done is got together as a team and decided we wanted to go and spread some joy, make some people happy. I hear from a lot of young people, sadly, that are getting bullied. And I heard from Jack just before the summer holidays. Jack's 12 and he was getting bullied all the time and he didn't know what to do, but he heard that I was running an anti-bullying program and he'd watched some of my videos on YouTube. And he got in touch with me and, and I gave him a ring and I, and I gave him some advice. And also says to him, look Jack, your school's in London. I've got an event in London in two weeks. How, how about you come, come to it? I didn't hear from Jack after that. And the event went ahead and it was a success. I went back to the office after the event, and there was an email from Jack's mum. Jack had been at the anti-bullying training. He had a great time. He'd convinced his head teacher to bring a load of students along, and they'd all left trained as anti-bullying ambassadors. But it was the last bit that really got to me. Jack didn't want to be an architect anymore. His mum said he wanted to be just like me. I love it when people get excited and make things happen. That inspires me, and I think young people have a huge part to play in our world. Every single one of us can do something for someone else. Why? Because I can, because you can, because we can. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm just thinking, if, if you had a sort of wish now, you know, a little fairy comes and you could have yep. one wish, is there, is there something huge that you could, and these are such important things you're doing, is, is there a wish list you have of something else you want to do next year or uh, you wish the government would get around you and... Yeah, well, I mean, I've, I've um, been quite, I'm going to Downing Street in two weeks, actually. Good, it was fantastic. Really, well, I've seen really the camera exciting. picture. Yeah. Um, yeah <laughs> but, um, Big mates. <laughs> but maybe if politicians acted on, on, on some, some of their ideas. I mean, I'm very lucky that my, my programme is funded by the government, but that's, that's ending, mm. ending next year. And I feel that sometimes they don't live in, in the real world and they don't understand some of the issues that, mm. that we all go through. Um, so I would like them um, to, to really kind of get behind uh, people with, with big ideas and, and help support them. Um, but I think whatever happens, I'm going to continue doing mm. what I'm doing because I'm passionate about that, but uh, maybe they can see how many other passionate people there are in schools, in communities, in workplaces um, that have big ideas that, that just need a little bit of support. Yeah, fantastic. And I think, again, we're linking so well with the idea of the voice because we talked about the Yemen community's voice. Young people's voice uh, is so important, empowerment to find solutions and actually um, define the culture of their schools because if they're given the power to do that, I'm sure things would open up much more quickly. So thank you very much, Alex. Thank you very much. Congratulations.